tonight. Mounting pressure. Bangladesh's Chief Justice resigns as the interim government continues to sort through the chaos. Reef ablaze. Gale force winds cause chaotic wildfires to spread throughout Athens. Rescue efforts racing against the clock to get those in the path of destruction to safety. Breaking the silence. US President Joe Biden speaks out on being made to step down from the presidential race by his own camp. And the daredevils return. Philippe Petit takes a chance to cheat death 50 years on from his iconic balancing act between New York City's Twin Towers. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us tonight on World News. With the start of a new week, we have fresh updates to bring you on key stories that we have been following up on. And we start off with the bulletin with more information on Bangladesh. Bangladesh's Chief Justice Obaidul Hassan resigned following new protests by a group of students and other demonstrators as the country's interim government, led by Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus, started functioning days after a mass uprising forced Prime Minister Sheikh Kasina to resign and flee to India. Mass protests over the past weeks have left more than 450 dead and many more injured. 48 hours after the student-approved interim government is formed, hundreds of protesters are back on the streets of Dhaka with new demands. Gathered outside the Supreme Court of Bangladesh, they want the Chief Justice to resign. Student leader Tariqul Islam says their fight is not over yet. Sheikh Hasina's fall is a partial victory for us. Only when we completely restructure our country and all state institutions, the judiciary, the parliament, the law enforcement agencies, and eradicate corruption from every ministry, will we achieve our final victory. Within hours, a new Chief Justice was appointed. Following ex-Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's escape amid weeks of deadly protests, the country plunged into chaos and disorder. Students have stepped up not only to manage the traffic, but also to tackle corruption. The Bangladeshi police have been missing from the street since the fall of Hasina. Their violent crackdown on the protesters left around 500 dead and thousands of others wounded. Hundreds among them with bullet injuries are being treated at this hospital. Even the doctors can't believe the scale of brutality. Most of the victims are young students like 17-year-old Abdullah Rahimad, who got three bullets in his leg. I dreamt all my life that I would defend my country and become an army officer, but I don't think that it's possible with my broken leg. Now I will try to study engineering at the public university. The new interim government, headed by Nobel laureate Mohammad Yunus, which includes two student leaders, gives young Bangladeshis hope for reforms toward a brighter future. We're over in neighboring India now, where according to local media reports, many were killed in a stampede during a Hindu procession in eastern India's Bihar state. The incident happened in the district of Jahanabad, where devotees had gathered for weekly prayers to mark the auspicious month of Sharwan, dedicated to the Hindu god Shiva. Chaos and mismanagement led to the stampede, according to survivors. Authorities were working to identify those who were killed and injured in the incident. A similar stampede at a Hindu religious event in neighboring Uttar Pradesh killed more than 100 people in July. Victims recall the traumatizing incident, stating so many were trapped together and barely made it out alive. The incident is thought to have occurred due to chaos within the crowd. Hong Kong's top court unanimously dismissed the bid to overturn the convictions of media tycoon Jimmy Lai and six other pro-democracy campaigners for an unauthorized assembly in 2019. 76-year-old Lai, the founder of the pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily and others including Martin Lee, had been found guilty of organising and participating in an unauthorised assembly in August 2019. 
during months-long pro-democracy protests in the China-ruled city. A lower court had overturned their conviction for organizing the unauthorized assembly, but their conviction for taking part in an unauthorized procession was upheld. The appeal focused on whether the conviction was proportionate to fundamental human rights protections, a principle that came from two non-binding decisions of Britain's Supreme Court. However, Chief Justice Andrew Chung said that the legal frameworks in Hong Kong and the UK differ significantly and should not be treated the same. Beijing imposed national security law in 2020 after months of pro-democracy protests in 2019, and the Hong Kong Legislative Council passed a new national security law, also known as Article 23, in March this year. Lai has been held in solitary confinement for more than three years since December 2020. He is now facing a separate national security trial and serving a sentence of five years and nine months after being convicted of violating a lease contract for his now shuttered newspaper's headquarters. According to the Security Bureau, over 300 people were arrested over acts or activities that endanger national security. Among them, 176 persons and five companies were charged. A wildfire fueled by gale force winds is spreading to the edge of Athens as thousands of residents are told to flee their homes. Houses caught alight in Varnavas, about 20 miles northeast of the Greek capital, and a children's hospital and medical military facility were evacuated at dawn. Residents of the Greek town of Varnavas fled their homes on Sunday as hundreds of firefighters battled a fast-moving wildfire just outside Athens. The blaze, about 20 miles north of Greece's capital, is being fueled by hot and windy weather. Thick clouds of smoke could be seen drifting over the tourist hotspot. A fire brigade spokesperson said flames were reaching as much as 25 meters high, swallowing up trees. Evacuation alerts are in place for nine areas near Vernavas. Several other regions across Greece are on high alert for fire risk. Authorities have called for emergency measures involving the army, police and volunteers to deal with forest fires until August 15. Hundreds of wildfires have broken out across Greece since May. Scientists attribute their frequency and intensity to the increasingly hot and dry weather conditions linked to climate change. After its warmest winter on record and long periods of little or no rainfall, Greece also registered its hottest June and July. It is expected to record its hottest ever summer this year. A pilot has died after their helicopter crashed into the roof of a hotel in Australia during an unauthorized early morning flight. The aircraft hit the Double Tree by Hilton Hotel in northern Queensland city of Cairns, sparking a fire and forcing the evacuation of hundreds of guests. Authorities say the only occupant of the helicopter died at the scene and two hotel guests, a man in his 80s and a woman in her 70s, were taken to hospital in a stable condition. Some local media reports have suggested that the helicopter was stolen. Nautilus Aviation, which owned the helicopter, said it would work closely with all authorities in Queensland as they examined the unauthorized use of one of their helicopters in the early hours of this morning. Meanwhile, updates on the war in Israel now. Israel has expanded evacuation orders in Khan Yunis in the southern Gaza Strip overnight, forcing tens of thousands of Palestinian residents and displaced families to leave their homes. The Israeli military said it was attacking militants from the Hamas group, who were using the areas to stage attacks and fire rockets. An announcement on X and sent to residents' phones said they should evacuate immediately for your own safety to a newly created humanitarian zone. But Palestinian and UN officials say there are no safe areas in the enclave. Gazans also complain they've been forced to move multiple times. This man is saying it's the 12th time he's had to flee since October 7th. That was the day Hamas militants stormed into southern Israel, killing 1,200 people and taking 250 hostages, according to Israeli tallies. Since then, nearly 40,000 Palestinians have been killed in the Israeli offensive, the Gaza Health Ministry says. In Khan Yunis, the evacuation order covered districts in the center, east and west. 
That makes it one of the largest such orders in the 10-month-old conflict and comes just two days after tanks returned to the east of the city. Later on Sunday, an Israeli airstrike near the market at the center of the city killed four Palestinians and wounded several others, medics said. Lines of smoke rose from areas where Israeli planes carried out attacks in the eastern and western parts of Khan Yunis. Residents said two multi-floor buildings were bombed. The evacuation order also follows the killing of at least 90 people, according to Gaza's civil defense service, in an Israeli airstrike on a school where displaced Palestinians were sheltering. That incident on Saturday prompted international outcry. The Israeli military said it had struck a Hamas and Islamic Jihad command post, killing 19. The two groups rejected that claim, which they said was being used as a pretext. Let's take a short commercial break now. More world news on the other side. And on the road to the White House tonight, President Biden offered some more insight into why he dropped out of the presidential race during an interview and said his Democratic colleagues told him his campaign would hurt members of the party down ballot. Biden told reporters that a number of his Democratic colleagues in the House and Senate thought that he was going to hurt them in the races. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi Senator Chuck Schumer and other Democrats reportedly called on Biden to drop out in private in the weeks following his first debate with Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris has gone 22 days as of today without holding a formal press conference or sit-down interview since becoming the presumptive Democratic presidential nominee. Harris, amid mounting criticism on the front, briefly talked to reporters travelling with her in Michigan. Speaking for just over a minute, she said she looked forward for debating former President Donald Trump on September 10th on ABC and defended the military record of her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz. President Volodymyr Zelensky said Ukraine launched an incursion into Russian territory to restore justice and pressure Moscow's forces in his first acknowledgement of Kyiv's surprise offensive. This comes as Kyiv and Moscow traded blame after a fire broke out at a cooling tower of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant under the control of Russian forces. Ukraine and Russia have accused the other of planning attacks that could set off nuclear disaster. Just weeks after conducting emergency response drills, Kyiv warned again that Russia is threatening to attack Europe's biggest nuclear power plant. Moscow has accused Ukraine of doing the same. The Zaporizhia nuclear power station, seen here in footage released by the Russian National Guard press service, has long been the subject of mutual recriminations and suspicions. Russian troops seized the station in the days following the Kremlin's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Each side has regularly accused the other of shelling around the plant and risking a major nuclear mishap. In an earlier statement, Ukrainian armed forces quoted operational data as saying that explosive devices had been placed on the roof of the station's third and fourth reactors on Tuesday. A spokesman for Russia's nuclear network operator, meanwhile, said Ukraine planned to drop ammunition laced with nuclear waste transported from another of the country's five nuclear stations on the plant. The UN's nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, has been trying for more than a year to get all sides to agree to demilitarize the plant. IAEA Director General Rafael Grossi has visited the plant three times since the Russian takeover, most recently on June the 15th. So far, he's failed to reach any agreement to keep the facility safe from shelling. An advisor to Vladimir Zelensky reportedly told Ukrainian television that Grossi had proved ineffective. Worries have also grown over the potential for an accident at the plant, that's after a local dam used to cool reactors was destroyed. Last month, pictures were released showing the breach of the Kakova Dam on the Dnipro River. Ukraine said Russia had destroyed a hydroelectric power plant at the site from the inside. Moscow blamed Kyiv. The IAEA said at the time that a local pond meant the plant should still be stable for, quote, some months. 
The death toll from a mountain of rubbish that collapsed in the Ugandan capital rose over 20 as rescuers with excavators continued searching for victims, according to the city authorities. At least four children are among those killed by the collapse at the Katizi landfill. The collapse is believed to have been triggered by heavy rainfall. Ugandans raced to dig out potential survivors after a deadly landslide in the capital Kampala on Saturday. The city's authorities said children were among the dead and that the rescue effort was still ongoing. Heavy rainfall caused sections of a landfill to collapse on Friday, covering nearby houses, according to local media. Kampala capital city authorities said government and Red Cross personnel were searching for bodies at the site. The landfill has served as Kampala's sole garbage dump for decades and had turned into a big hill. Residents have long complained of hazardous waste from the site, polluting the environment and posing a danger to people living nearby. Let's go for a short commercial break. More world news right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 50 years after his iconic high-wire walk between the Twin Towers of New York's World Trade Center, Felipe Petit recreated the death-defying stunt with a performance about seven miles north of the Trade Center at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. It's one of the most stunning feats the world has ever seen. A daredevil walking a high wire between the iconic Twin Towers. It was 1974. Philippe Petit was 1,350 feet above New York City. Fast forward 50 years later, and Petit is commemorating the golden anniversary by getting back on the wire. Yes, Petit doing what he loves, this time at New York's Cathedral Church of St. John the Divine. At 74, he's staying a little closer to the ground. He's 20 feet high on a wire that stretches across the cathedral. Just like they were decades ago, the audience was captivated, holding their breath as he made his way across the wire. Look as he kneels without holding the balance pole. Now hold your breath as he fully reclines on the wire. Amazing in 1974, still amazing in 2024. And with that, we mark the end of today's bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest happenings across the globe. Stay tuned as Vinod Surya will join you next with the Nightly Business Report. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night.